Welcome to Wager Talk TV. I am Kelly Stewart at Kelly in Vegas on Twitter. Joined by Marco D'Angelo at Marco in Vegas on Twitter and Ralph Michaels at Cal Sports LV. Make sure you guys are giving them a nice little follow, especially Ralph in this database. He's just getting people all fired up on Twitter. Where did you get this database? <laughs> I love it. Good stuff. Uh, we're talking about my favorite subject today, though, guys, so kind of threw me off there for a second. <laughs> we need some tips when betting underdogs here college football and NFL the question comes from what is your pro uh, comes from at Troy McKnight what is your process for analyzing and down selecting your underdog candidates during football season um, you guys know one of my favorite things is reverse line movement like uh, we can look at dogs all day and stuff like this but all of a sudden when my favorite thing is is when I, I have an underdog circle I'm like I'm gonna hang tight it's only it's only Tuesday we see that line drop, but all the tickets are on the other side. I'm like, I know I got a nice juicy one here. You know, Duke at Baylor's of the world where you just see the line plummet and you got a good number and you're on the right side. But you guys give out some of your favorite uh, things to look for here in college football and NFL. Well, to say I'm going to look for a dog blindly, you don't want to do. Correct. Now, I, I tweeted this out today. In the last six years in the NFL, against the spread, the favorite is 751 and 751. Hmm, I could figure that's 50%. <laughs> so you can't say I want to look for dogs or, or favorites. Colleges over the last three years, I'll tell you that the favorite is 48.4%. So there is a 1.6 gap there that does give you a 3.2 edge with the dog. But I agree with, with you. We did another video about power ratings. If you are confident of your work, don't worry about where a Vegas line is posted. A Vegas line is posted to get equal money on both sides. There used to be value playing against the Dallas Cowboys because they were America's team. There's value that, well, the Patriots are the, 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 the burner of that because they continue to cover. But when you get those popular teams that the public is on, Stick with your numbers and don't be afraid to say, why is this number two no, or three Northwestern points Northwestern last year was just an absolute last machine. Last three years they've been a dog. Yeah, and in the Big Ten, they were an absolute underdog machine. They didn't get it done for me um, against Bucky, but you know what? That was a team. And they that, could have. I mean, it went down to the wire where you know, Ohio State scores late. Uh, right, but those, those outright underdogs, and I said, you know, at that point in time, like, you can look at people's power rankings week in and week out, but it doesn't matter. We have to keep adjusting for this team where – Maybe the public perception isn't, or the sports books weren't. So I just rode that team until they died, and, and it was very profitable. The difference is, if that same team, people, people don't think dog trends continue like favorite trends, because people think the favorite team is better, they're dominant, they might cover seven in a row. Well, when a team's covering seven in a row as a favorite, that line starts to get pushed out two or three or four points. When a team covers five or six as a dog, you don't have the same adjustment because they think they're the weaker team, they're getting lucky. Oh, they, they didn't win that game, they lost. And people have the perception that, oh, I lost the game, the team isn't as good as the other team. Well, you're comparing two teams and that team continues to, to, over, to play better than Vegas thinks they are and that's the value of a dog. Marco, I know that uh, you and I are very similar, especially in situations. <laughs> so I, I, if you don't get to this one, I'm going to get to it. But I wanna, I'm really curious to hear maybe some of your situation, situations you're looking for. Well, let's start with just some fun, fundamental stuff when you're looking at dogs. In the NFL, if you're going to bet an underdog, you got to really believe that they can win the game outright. Because the majority of the time in the NFL, now you talked about the record with favorites is 50%. But if you actually went back and ran it, and I'm sure you will when you get home and you'll tweet it out at me, <laughs> what is just pick the winner of the game, what are they against the point spread? Because we see more often than not the dogs, you know, when they cover, they also won the game out. Absolutely. Outright. And favorites. And NBA playoffs, I think, are 58 and 8. I mean, it's something like that yeah. off the top uh, of my in head. The, Same in situation. The, in the NFL, it's upper 70% range, close to 80. The winner of the game is also going to be the point spread winner. So if I'm betting a dog, I'm not going to take a dog where I'm going in thinking, well, I'm getting six, but I think this is going to be a field goal game, so I'll go ahead and do it. No, I want to believe that this team can win the game outright, and the points are just a bonus. I also like betting on defensive underdogs. I'm old school. I still love 
teams that can play defense. I mean, it's, it's the old adage, better defense plus the points. Yeah, it, it's fundamental. It's worked. It's time tested because you know the defense is going to keep you in that game so that you're not getting blown out, that you always have an opportunity in that game. And if you're getting points, obviously with a good defensive team, you can get that late score if the other team's just trying, you know, to melt clock and so forth. The other thing that I like to look at um, in the NFL, and then I'll get to a college one, is look at the total, okay? If you've got a game where the total is in, you know, 52, 53, it's going to be a high-scoring game. Variance is going to be there. You know, and a lot of people say, well, they're both going to go up and down the field. Well, yeah, you know, they might, but the line's three or three and a half. It's going to come down to who has the ball last. If I'm looking at like a total... Like we saw with Rams Chiefs yeah, last year, right. you, so, any, either one of those teams could have won. You're saying that... You're getting three in a 50-point game, so you're getting one and a half percent of the line. Yes. If you're getting seven in a line of 40, yes. you're getting 30 percent of the line. Absolutely, you're going to look at situations like that. Now, Forgive my math; it's not 30 well, yeah, percent. You got what I meant. Yeah, yeah. the yes. points are going to be you know harder to come by. So if you're getting points, it makes more sense to be on the dog. Going to college football, there's some things, and I know I'm going to make the math guys just you know <laughs> just sit up and puke. Um, I like seeing a two and a half point road dog. And I know that guys will run, they'll knock each other over getting to the strip to grab that two and a half. When I see a number go to two and a half, that for the books to move off of sevens and threes, they're Sometimes. getting a lot of money. And it's sharp money that's doing it. I love that. In college football, I like the I would use the ratings sometimes. If you got a Saturday night game and you got a team that's ranked in the top 15. Yep. And they're laying less than a touchdown at home. Man, everybody's running to the window or to bet that laying, ranked team. Or they're laying one and a half on the road, oh, something yeah. ridiculous to maybe, you know, Just an, an unranked opponent that's eh on everybody else's what, radar. If it looks too good, it, it generally is too it, it is too good. And those are where you see the things going. And I know people will say, again, here's where the EV guys will go. If you're watching the numbers during the course of the week and you've got a game that's sat at seven all week, maybe some seven and a halfs early in the week, but then has been sitting on seven all week. But game day, you see it go to six and a half. Again, the books aren't going to open themselves up to be middled unless they've got no other recourse. They're getting so much money, and it's sharp. We know that the public generally does not bet dogs. Now, I'll tell you where well, I will. Well, when they do, it's a kiss of death. Well, that's exactly. <laughs> that's what, if I'm looking at a sharp book, you know, you have sharp books and you have square books. It doesn't matter if you have offshore accounts or you have places here in Vegas. There are books that I deem sharp, and there's books that I deem square as, you know, SpongeBob SquarePants, okay? If you see the dog, the line going down on a dog at one of those recreational books, that's when you run with both hands to, to bet the favorite in, in the game. Well, Let that's usually you. what happens to me after I've set up my three-team money line parlay, and it looks great Thursday and Friday, and then all of a sudden Saturday morning, I'm like, well, that's going to be a loser. Yeah. And there's just literally nothing you can do at that point. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go opposite side of Mark on that. If I have a team and I feel strongly about that team and the team was seven and it goes down to six and a half, I'm still going to use my team. I don't care what the public does. I don't care what the Sharps do. If I'm that confident in my number and I have a big enough gap in my number, I don't care what the number moves. I, I just feel that strongly right. about my play. So I understand Marco's point. I'm not arguing that. I love Ralph because in our last video, he just goes, you can't be so arrogant to think your number's right. <laughs> That's early I'm sorry, in the I NFL. Love you. I'm sorry. Mid-season mid no, college football, help. again. I Ralph, made, I know you make some of the best power well, ratings in time. I made them. Uh, the, my number may be wrong. But I'm still very confident in that number. I will bet it confidently and then make an adjustment. But that doesn't mean I'm not 100% confident in my number going in. Last thing I'll just talk about with dogs. You find the most value, I think, in dogs in college football early in the season off misleading finals. People don't look at box scores, yard scores. All of a sudden, you're minus four turnovers. You lost the game by 28. People think the team stinks in week two. Those teams that had a yardage edge and lost a game by, by multiple touchdowns because they lost a turnover battle are absolute money. Marco. He, he, you made a point in an earlier video about the strength of schedule at the beginning of the season. There's such disparity on 
the top and bottom teams that play early in, you know, the little sisters of the poor, as you say, for the paychecks, yes, that skews the numbers and it gives you great opportunities for inflated dogs. If you have, you know, sorry, I know yeah. this one's going long, but if there are times when you are playing an FCS opponent week one, you're a Sunbelt team or a MAC team. Your goal is to get to six wins. Yeah. You have a Sunbelt team week one, you care about that game. You have a Power five team week two, you don't care about that team. Week three, you have a Sun Belt or a Mountain West Conference, a smaller conference mm -hmm. team that you care about the team. There are times that you think, oh, my God, they're excited to play this team. Well, they don't put all the effort into a lot of those times where right. they travel late. It's not in their game plan. They run a very vanilla game plan not to get hurt. So, again, not all dogs are good. you got to look for the spots. Marco, you, you left out my favorite, my favorite situation, Which finding one? underdogs. Sandwiches. <laughs> oh, sandwich games. Yes, absolutely. Uh, d yeah, well, you know, it's been a long day. Kelly's been up early. I've been up early. Hey, yes. PGA on the East Coast is never good for life. You know, I'm going to say that right now. We, we get lucky, you know, Monday night football, Sunday night football, we're yeah. spoiled out here on the West Coast. Yeah. That early wake-up call for, for, the, uh, for the PGA this morning was not my cup of tea. Wait till you that start just means you're making steps up. Yeah, wait till you start covering stuff that's, you know, European stuff and you're going to... Sounds terrible. Yeah. That means you I just got to call Carmine every day. <laughs> Stay up and keep drinking from the night before. <laughs> oh, good grief. All right, great stuff from both guys. Wager Talk Text Club is 100% free. Just text Wager Talk to 33222 to get a $10 coupon for signing up, plus free picks and other special offers.